Hello YouTube, welcome to Sunday in the Shop. It's over 80 degrees in here. It's 50 degrees outside. I started the stove this morning. Oops, sorry about bumping the camera. No time to edit. It's Sunday. We can goof off. Anyway, I got a load of wood today. Uh, yard's muddy. None of us got stuck. I had to move my truck. Uh, we're getting near the wood pile. And I'd ask the wood man when I called him, I said, do you have any old hatchet heads, axe heads, hammers, anything laying around? So he said he had a funny looking hammer, so uh, he just gave me these. Of course, I gave him a pocket knife. I gave him one the uh, first time when he brought me wood this winter. I just gave him one today when he brought me some wood. First, I want to show you this. How much do you have to beat with a little ball peen hammer to do this to it? I mean, I'm going to redo it. Not today. Believe me. Uh, this might be someday when I'm bored in the spring or something. I'm just not going to tackle that right now. I don't need a ball peen hammer that bad. I have one around here about the size I cannot find a hammer. So, off with that. We'll take a picture of it though. Here's the jewel of the pile. I call this a crate hammer. Back in the old days when you had stuff shipped in wooden crates. Uh, I remember a movie I watched. Uh, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein when they're, un they're uncrating uh, Frankenstein and Dracula when they deliver it. He's used a hammer, I think, something similar to this, but you, you, you'll see him out there. Uh, maybe in some old show, but that was one movie I remembered I watched about a month ago. Uh, the wood's got a big gouge here. We're still going to sand it and probably leave that in there. We don't feel like making handles today. Uh, I know I could take these pins out, so we're going to sand real carefully the metal here. Uh, we have to hunt up some wire brushes because we just want to do this today. We just want to wire brush it, clean it up. We'll probably shoot it with a coat of clear. I don't know for sure if we're going to paint it. We have some cheap flat black paint uh, which would look okay on it. So it would look alright. So we're just going to hang it on the wall. We'll probably put a nail right here where it hangs. You know, like that up on the wall. There you go. Two different nail pullers, the hammer, and a little hatchet. And you know, it doesn't look abused too bad. If you really look at the claws and stuff, and look at the head of it, it doesn't look like it was beat to death. Uh, no markings I could see. There's some funny looking thing in there. It could just be in the molding. So, we don't waste a whole lot of time here. Uh, we'll clean this up. We'll come back and show you what it looks like. Uh, I've been inspired. I've been watching the channel on YouTube. I should put a link to his channel, but uh, if you're into these tools, you've probably looked for all kinds of videos of restoring old tools. So, said the wood's going to just get sanded. Uh, we're going to try to stay away from it with the aggressive stuff. We just want to clean it up a little bit. So, we'll be back. We're going to work on this, and we'll be back. And I, this might just be the whole whole day right here today. So, stay tuned. You'll get to see what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, we don't have a rare antique, but I don't know. It could be a collectible. Uh, I'll take a picture of it. Swordfish brand. Has a little swordfish on there. Made in China. This could be one of the very first imported Harbor Freight tools. Of course, I'm joking. Nobody had gotten it. If anybody wants to go out there and look on the internet, let me know. We're trying to get rid of some of the wire brush marks. We kept hitting. We was trying to go down here with the wire brush. And it's down to the nub. Uh, that's the only reason it took this off in the drill. Because it's down to the nubs. I need a new one. I finally destroyed my 3 inch whatever wire brush. So We're going to do a little more sanding on that. We're going to put some oil on there. We're going to paint this flat black. It's just going to be a wall hanger. I mean, if it was a really rare antique or something, of course, paint can always come back off. We're going to paint it flat black, not shiny gloss. And then when you put oil on it, it's going to look kind of shiny. Uh, I'll give you a bonus tip here. Uh, I had that brown primer on my knob on my knife sharpener. It got all gooey nasty, so we bought some cheap dollar stores. Miracle brand. And no, I don't get paid to show any products. I even put it in the description all the time. And when you spray it out on here, it does the same thing. When you wipe it off like the next day, it gets kind of shiny. That was too light coat. So here are some gouges in it from using too rough a sandpaper. I want to get that nasty stuff off. But yeah, it got all gooey and everything. Okay, while we're on the subject about buying cheap stuff, look what I found. 
This is from Dollar General. I'm looking at all the scented purple and blue nail polish removers and set beside it, of course, everything for an old guy's on the bottom shelf. Got to bend your back over, hang on the cart, don't fall over. I mean, it, it, I'm not complaining, uh, but it's always that way for me. Even the spray paint's on the bottom shelf. I think it has to be up out of the way so the kids can't grab it. Okay, spill proof. 100%. And all you do on this, first let's turn it. If you've seen her, I don't know if you can see inside her. This locks, it won't press down. Now it'll press down. Okay. See that? It wants you to open the lid, put your cotton ball in there and push down. So you've seen it spray, right? We don't want to waste this stuff. It's probably a dollar and a half. See that? It hasn't ate through these gloves yet. These are the cheapy ones, but kind of splash that off over there. So that's what we're going to wipe it down with. We've been using 90% rubbing alcohol and stuff, and we've had a little problem with uh, paint bumbling and stuff. Even though we've used soap and water on things and used alcohol, we're going to use just the cheapy acetone. The next time I go, I'm going to buy another one of these because it's 100%. So. When I come back, it'll be painted, just be oiled. Uh, we're probably going to try to mask this off. And we might paint this with a brush. And all I do is spray some in an old lid and use a model car brush and paint it. We still do not want to stain the wood with paint. So we will put cheap masking tape on here. We'll probably paint the rivets. Uh, so I'm off to do that in this video. I won't be able to finish this video for probably a few hours this evening. Uh, it's whatever time in the afternoon right now. So. We got as much rust as we could out of there with the little diamond Dremel bits. Like I said, it's just going to be a wall hanger, but we'll take a before and after picture of this. That was that funny looking, looked like it ate rust or something in there. There was like something in there. And I got more excited because I got that. I started, that, that looks like a shape. And then when I seen writing, I was just a going for it. I thought I had the rarest antique imported from who knows where. But it'll be a wall hanger, so stay tuned. This video is going to be long just on one subject. Well, we did include this. Uh, might as well include this. These are sanding discs. Do not ask me to grit. Whatever left over to scrub the wood. Because it's real doughy. I mean, if you scrub on it and get out, it is so old. Loot right in front of you. See how bad it is? So, some oil on it, and I'll soak it up quicker than a dry camel in a desert. I just made that up. Stupid corny lines. Anyway, stay tuned. When I come back, this will be all done. It'll probably be two hours from now, but uh, to you, it'll just be a couple seconds. So, hang in there. Okay, this looks a lot nicer than I thought it would be. And what's odd, this is flat black paint. It's only been dried for probably about a half hour. Like I said, it's over 70 degrees over there where it was setting in the vise by the wood stove. And I did just put masking tape on the wood and then sprayed down. So there might be a little over spray, but uh, put my linseed oil on there. That came out really nice for being old wooden handle. We took a few pictures of it. And we took a couple of the hammers so you can see how damaged it is. But that's going to be nice hanging on the wall. We'll just put a nail here so it hangs down. So, it'll be a nice wall hanger. I'm never going to use it. I hope you can see the pictures okay of that. I took one with it painted and one without. We'll try to make both of them look good. Said so even though it's imported, we know it's old. We know how rusted it was, pitted. We, we know it's not just some uh, tool that's a modern tool because I don't even think they make this stuff like this anymore. So. So it could be one of the very first things imported from China. It could have came over on the boat from somewhere. You know, it could have been a tool that wasn't imported and someone moved here or whatever. And that's how it ended up in our country. But ended up on a farm in Iowa. Shoved in a barn or an old shed. So that's the only story I can give you. I'll go too fast there. And there you go. I said we're not going to sharpen it. So, thanks for watching this week. Uh, only one project, but uh, I could have made a video on this and posted it. But these things are out there on YouTube. You're going to find videos of them. So, I like doing stuff like this sometimes. Just, just for my subscribers that watch on Sunday. So, 
Thanks again for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week.